So the Island Walk, what is it? And uh, what was our thinking? Well, um, I, I like long distance walking. And uh, a few years ago, my partner and I walked the Camino in Spain. And, um, and that was quite an experience, uh, 800 kilometers. It took us uh, a little over a month to do it. And then uh, subsequently in 2019, uh, Sue and I walked uh, a trail called the Road to Vincentina in Portugal, which is about 225 kilometers, um, mostly along, the, it goes from Lisbon south to the southern tip of Portugal. And um, when we did that walk, I realized that, um, you know, that, that kind of long distance walk would be quite feasible in Prince Edward Island. Uh, very much like southern Portugal, really. I mean, the climate is not the same, obviously, but uh, um, the trails are, are linked by towns, little towns along the way, about 20 kilometers between each town. And that's quite comparable to PEI. And uh, in Prince Edward Island, as many of you know, we have the Confederation Trail, which uh, is part of the Trans-Canada Trail. It's now 450 kilometers of... Uh, of uh, crushed uh, stone dust, beautiful trail in PEI. But the Confederation Trail is where the, the rail line used to be, and it's mostly uh, up the middle of the island. So, um, and most of the scenery is on the seacoast. So we thought, well, let's try to combine as much of the Confederation Trail with coastal walks as we could to create a walk around the perimeter of uh, Prince Edward Island. So that's what we did. Uh, we created a 700 kilometer route around the perimeter of PEI. It takes uh, a little about a little over a month to do it if you do 20 to 25 kilometers a day. And 20 to 25 kilometers is a pretty reasonable day. Uh, if you have all day to do it, you can, we, we walked that distance uh, when we did the Camino, sometimes a little longer. And um, it's a comfortable distance. It's not too long, it's not too short. You generally finish uh, around one o'clock in the afternoon if you start around eight or nine o'clock in the morning. And then you have time to relax and, uh, and enjoy your evening. Uh, we stayed with, uh, with private accommodation a lot of the times, but uh, I'll get into that as, we, uh, as I get into the presentation. So the Island Walk, also the, called the Camino de la Isla in Spanish for those that are interested in the Camino. There's been a lot of interest in Camino walkers. There's a, a long distance group uh, in Canada called the, uh, the Canadian Company of Pilgrims, 5,000 people. And uh, they're very interested in this island walk. So we did it in uh, October, 2019. And you may remember that uh, back in September, 2019, we had a, a large hurricane in PEI. It probably uh, impacted some of Nova Scotia, but it was very serious here. And, um, and the, the result was a lot of trees down. And I work with Island Trails doing volunteer trail cleaning. And this is what we were faced with right after Dorian. Um, and on the uh, Confederation Trail, this is what the Confederation Trail looked like uh, after Dorian as well. This is um, uh, Sonia Richmond. She and her partner are walking the Trans-Canada Trail right now. They're in the They've left uh, from Manitoba this year, and uh, they were walking in PEI that uh, uh, just after Dorian, they encountered 150 trees down on the first eight kilometers that they walked. The good news is that uh, the Confederation Trail is maintained by the government of PEI. They have about 75 people that uh, keep the trail clear. So by a week later, the trail was clear. And um, when we walked it, first of October, we, uh, we were able to walk on the Confederation Trail without encountering uh, a lot of blowdown. So we start, um, as you can see from this, uh, this map, in, uh, in Prince Edward Island, where arguably the, the, the uh, Trans-Canada Trail, the uh, concept started in Summerside PEI. And, uh, and we were walking a good deal of the, uh, the route in PEI starting in Joe Giz Park, which is in Charlottetown. So this is what the Charlottetown uh, waterfront looks like, uh, just a little bit west of Joe Giz Park. There's a nice boardwalk there, as you can see, 
And uh, when we started walking, this is what the Confederation Trail looks like uh, in Charlottetown as you head north, leaving Joe Giz Park. So um, we walked on, uh, on this part of the Confederation Trail and then we turned uh, west uh, after about 10 kilometers and walked through the town of Charlottetown on the sidewalks and then made our way to, uh, to Dunedin in the west. So this is uh, essentially what our route looks like. Uh, uh, day 32, the day we finished, is uh, in Charlottetown, and day one is in Dunedin, about uh, 20 kilometers west of Charlottetown. Um, we, uh, this map shows the route. You can see it pretty well goes around the perimeter of the island, um, and there are a few uh, additions that will probably appear later on in the western part of the island. There's some parts that we uh, skipped over right down here, if you can see my cursor. Uh, and we didn't go to Georgetown, but we wanted to stick around uh, 700 kilometers. So we kept the route uh, as short as we could practically by, by also doing the perimeter. So uh, day one was, uh, we stopped in Dunedin. Uh, it's a beautiful dirt road walk, which you'll see in a second. Uh, day two was in Victoria by the sea. And uh, we stayed with, uh, well, our initial plan was to stay on B&Bs along the way, but uh, as people learned that we were walking around the island, it started to attract so much attention on PEI, so much interest that people kept calling us and offering for us to stay with them uh, for the night and for often for dinner. So uh, that's what happened the first two days. We stayed with Ruth along the first night, Sheldon White the second night, and we stayed with people. Uh, we, we ended up staying in B&Bs five nights. The rest of the nights we spent uh, with total strangers who offered uh, accommodation as we went along. So uh, it was quite a quite an experience. This is what Victoria by the Sea looks like uh, in the uh, in the early part of the season. Uh, it's a beautiful spot, uh, lovely, uh, lovely little community with a playhouse and a chocolate factory and and lots of little uh, artisan shops. Um, pottery shops. And this is what the, uh, the walk looked like. Um, this is what we, we spent about um, one quarter of the, of the walk on dirt roads. Uh, when we weren't walking on the Confederation Trail, we were walking mostly on dirt roads. And this is what some of the uh, red dirt roads look like. This one's uh, uh, on the way to Argyle Shore. And this is uh, the McEachern Road, again, not too far from, uh, from Dunedin. Uh, popular route for, uh, for cycling and also walking. And um, on the other side of, uh, of Victoria by the Sea, we, uh, we walked uh, along towards Borden Carlton. You can see the bridge in a few minutes. I'll show you the picture of that. This is uh, Tryon, which is uh, on the way. And uh, one of the things that you may remember from PEI if you've visited recently is that we have lots and lots of little churches and those people who are interested in the Camino are often interested in visiting little churches along the way. This is uh, a United Church in Tryon, lots of churches. Um, we made our way to the Confederation Bridge along the Western coast of, of PEI. The bridge is there in the background. And this is the four of us that, uh, that walked the whole route. There's um, a shot of the bridge from that churchyard. And then we made our way to, uh, to Summerside. Um, we're, at this point, we're back on the Confederation Trail and the Confederation Trail uh, goes right through this, the city of Summerside. There are two cities in PEI, Summerside being one of them. And as you can see, when you're walking on the trail in Summerside, you wouldn't know you're walking right through the center of town. Uh, the, uh, the trail is not shared with motorized vehicles. We don't have any motorized vehicles on the Confederation Trail. We've managed to uh, avoid the, uh, the ATVs on the trail. And this is how they do it with gates. A combination of gates and fines seem to work. This is Summerside uh, with uh, right in, walking right along the road, but you can see there are a few ducks that we were enjoying as we were uh, walking along as well. 
this section is uh, is one of the, one of the busier roads, but uh, we uh, we still have a nice view of the uh, of the city. And this is downtown Summerside. There's a boardwalk there. We walked along, and you can see it's quite peaceful there in the mornings. Hardly know that you're walking through the city. And then we continued west. Um, back on the Confederation Trail um, up towards uh, Miskush. We ran, ran into uh, one of the trail clearing crews that were cutting uh, the damage from the damaged, tr the damaged trees from um, Hurricane Dorian, um, an all female um, uh, trail maintenance crew. And continuing along from there, we were heading towards uh, towards Wellington. This is the, again, the Confederation Trail, the longest uh, straight section of the Confederation Trail. And we made our way uh, up to Western PEI. Um, the people that live in Cape Wolf, um, Ellen and Brian, both lobster fishermen, uh, they hosted us for, for three nights at their cottage. And we had someone pick us up and drive us up to their cottage uh, every day for three days. This is what our view was like. And then we, we continued along. This is what the shoulder of the roads look like in Western PEI. We're heading there towards uh, Mimnagash. And north of Mimnagash is uh, Skinner's Pond. This is uh, walking past Skinner's Pond, our view from the, uh, the roadside. And then along to, uh, to Norway, which is uh, very close to the Western tip of PEI. As you can see, it's a windmill farm up that way. And then on to uh, to North Cape, which is the uh, the northern the northwestern tip of uh, of Prince Edward Island, and these are uh, my three colleagues that were walking with me. A beautiful sunny day. Uh, Island Trails maintains the trail up at the end of this uh, this part of North uh, North North Cape. And it goes along by where that uh, windmill is. And then we start coming down the other side. Um, this is again another shot of uh, North Cape. And then um, we're in what's called a Sea Cow Pond here. We, we walked in October and uh, this is what uh, Sea Cow Pond looked like in October of 2019. As you can see, still a nice, uh, a nice warm day. It's also the end of lobster season on this part of the coast. So this lobster boat was just bringing in its traps. And we had a nice chat with the uh, the uh, the folks that uh, run this lobster fishing enterprise. This is a, a view of a Sea Cow Pond and Anglo Tignish, which is uh, where we stayed that night. We stayed uh, in Tignish. This is one of the churches along the way. This this is a, a beautiful old church, St. Simon and St. Jude uh, Church in Tignish, built in the uh, mid 1800s. Um, Gorgeous church inside, as you can see from the shot, with a, a wonderful uh, historic pipe organ built by the uh, Casavante people out of Montreal. Um, the organ in this church is uh, reputed to be worth a million dollars. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what they say. And moving on, uh, we worked our way down. Now we're on the uh, east coast of uh, the, the northeast coast of uh, PEI worked our way towards uh, um, Miss Gush, stayed in a B&B that night, and then we were back on the, uh, on the Confederation Trail. Um, in 2020, we had envisaged a lot of people would be walking, but uh, of course with the COVID, they weren't. So I was out taking photographs. These shots were taken in April, 2020 of some of the other churches that uh, you encounter along the way. Had a bit of snow there. Now we're back. Um, walking on the island walk in uh, in Portage, which is the narrowest part of PEI. You can see water there on the right. And uh, if you walk about a half a kilometer on the left, you'd see water again. This is uh, where PEI is quite narrow. You, you don't notice the water unless you're really looking for it. A bit of a rainy day in Portage. And this is what the Confederation Trail looked like uh, that day as we, uh, we worked our way along. Um, Again, we uh, ended up back in Summerside, uh, walking along the Confederation Trail. The woman on the right here is, uh, uh, we, we met her on the trail. We kept running into people who wanted to walk with us. 
uh, and this uh, Colleen Poirier is one of the people that uh, we met. Uh, she's walked the, uh, the Confederation tra Trail uh, tip to tip, but uh, her, her, uh, she'd walked it tip to tip in segments and she left her car and she would walk and then turn around and walk back. So she's actually, actually walked it twice. So she's walked 900 kilometers along the Confederation Trail. Um, we continued, uh, continued east uh, again on dirt roads uh, just beyond Kensington. This is what the, uh, the Island Walk looks like uh, near Long River. Again, we're on a dirt road. And we stayed with uh, a very lovely couple just uh, outside of Long River on the, at Stanley Bridge that night. They hosted us and the next morning, uh, we were walking again, uh, this time along the Gulf Shore Parkway in the, uh, the PEI National Park. The uh, bridge was under construction. So as a result, we ended up uh, walking out on the beach. You can see the route, the main route is right behind us there uh, behind that fence, but uh, we walked along the shore and we did a little detour around that bridge, which is what we're doing here, bushwhacking. This is what the shore walk looked like um, along by Mackenzie's Brook. And this is what the, um, the scenery looks like on the beach. Uh, there are a number of opportunities, lots of opportunities to walk along the beaches on this island walk. This one is along the Gulf Shore Parkway. It's a 10 kilometer stretch between Cavendish and Rus uh, North Rustico. Another beautiful beach shot. And this is uh, North Rustico, the community itself. We walk right through the community and the beach and the boardwalk. And uh, this is the vista you get walking along there. Um, again, this is uh, some, this is an oyster fisherman uh, fishing boat uh, right along uh, by Cimbria where we spent one night, which is uh, also along that coast. And then we're, this is a very windy day. We walk by Dalve by the sea, if you know that uh, beautiful inn, which is on the left here. And uh, um, the winds that day were, were, were about 90 kilometers an hour. So we had uh, a very windy walk. As you can see, we we're walking right into the wind that day. Uh, no mosquitoes in that, <laughs> in that kind of climate. And then back on the uh, Confederation Trail through uh, Mount Stewart, Bear River, and Elmira. And uh, this is the uh, four of us plus one uh, walking along the Confederation Trail. As you can see, the leaves have started to change color by this time. We're mid-October and uh, walking along the Confederation Trail. The trail ends in Elmira and um, we were joined by quite a few walkers on this day. Um, as we walk around the, the tip of PEI, it's called East Point. So you can see the green triangle here is Elmira. And, uh, and then we, uh, we did another little detour where this spot here is on the map. We get out to the, uh, the north side beach instead of walking down the road here. I described this route, uh, this route deviation on my, in my guidebook. For those of you that uh, want to know more about the walk, I would encourage you to, uh, to get the book because it'll tell you about some of the uh, little secrets along the way, like how to walk along the north side beach. This one is a gorgeous walk actually along that beach. And this is what um, the view looks like on the north side beach, pretty much deserted with the East Point uh, lighthouse off in the future in the distance there. And then we rounded uh, the north, the, uh, the East Point light and headed down towards Basin Head Basin Head is one of our well-known beaches. Um, this bridge will be crowded in the summer with uh, kids jumping off of it. But by the time October rolls around, uh, it's pretty quiet. And this is what it looks like uh, in April uh, 2020. You can see a little bit of snow there in the foreground. Also pretty deserted, uh, but very busy in July and August. And then we continued along through uh, through Surrey and then on to uh, Fortune. Uh, PEI is known for its coastline, but it's also known for many, many beautiful rivers. Uh, the Fortune River uh, is, is, is lovely and the Island Walk touches on a lot of these, uh, these beautiful river views. Um, the walk takes you right past the Inn at Bay Fortune. Michael Smith, uh, if you are into uh, uh, gast uh, gastronomic experiences, then uh, the end of Bay Fortune is a, uh, 
a must see. Uh, we stayed there uh, in 2020 during COVID. They were they had a partial opening, and uh, it's a spectacular meal available there at uh, with some wonderful accommodation. Um, we had some experiential tourism as we were going along. We stayed um, one night in Hao Bay, which is uh, along uh, the edge of a blueberry farm that is owned by uh, some people that we met. So this is what um, a um, blueberry farm was, uh, was clearing some land. So uh, Edwin McKee, the owner, insisted that we, uh, we operate the uh, machinery so we learn how to uh, operate a transporter to move some of the logs that he has to uh, cut before he makes it into a blueberry field. And this is uh, my uh, partner in, uh, in walking, Nora Watton, who uh, got to uh, control the, uh, the blueberry harvesting machinery. And this is the group we met with uh, the day we got to Cardigan. You can see we had quite a crowd, uh, 27 walking on that day walking from Cardigan to, uh, to Montague. And this is what the Confederation Trail looks like as you enter into uh, Montague, beautiful vista on a very sunny day and a lovely uh, lunch stop in Montague at a, uh, a nice, um, a nice uh, coffee shop there that had some difficulty accommodating 27 of us. But uh, some of us also went to a, a craft brewery that's there. We continued along to uh, to Gasparo and um, and uh, this, this is a lovely beach walk along there. Plus, as you can see, we're getting close to uh, Halloween. So uh, this is what uh, some locals had uh, decorated their place. We were walking along the road here and stopped to uh, check out the decorations. And this is what our lunch stop looked like along the road uh, in Murray River. Uh, in Murray River, we're, we're back on the Confederation Trail again. So uh, this is what the, uh, the trail looks like. Um, continued our, our way back to, uh, to Charlottetown. I'm showing here on this map a little deviation off the uh, Confederation Trail and I explain more how that works in the guidebook. Um, this is the, the, the core group of walkers, but we had lots of others walking with us that day. And the, uh, the final day into uh, Stratford and then Charlottetown uh, off the uh, Confederation Trail now, but walking through uh, Stratford, which is a suburb of, uh, of Charlottetown, and 17 of us that day as we, uh, we entered into, uh, into Charlottetown. And uh, I skipped over that one, but how do we go back? I'm going to go back here somewhere. Uh, in any event, um, I won't bother going back, but um, the, uh, the walk into Charlottetown was, uh, we were met by, <laughs> by the news media. By this time we were, we'd been on uh, the, the, the uh, TV news a couple of times. We had a film crew coming out, taking pictures of us. And, um, and we, uh, we got a lot of, uh, we were on the front page of the, uh, the Charlottetown Guardian, a lot of interest uh, and there continues to be a lot of interest in PEI about, uh, about the island walk. So subsequently, we've uh, we, we've uh, had a lot of interest. We've we've uh, attracted interest from the PEI government. They've helped us develop a website uh, called theislandwalk.ca. We've developed a um, a logo and um, uh, a lot of good literature around what the uh, what the island walk is all about. You can check out the website, and it'll describe to you in quite a bit of detail what the uh, the walk is. Uh, is like, and what you can do if you aren't planning to walk the whole thing. Uh, the website also talks about itineraries from four days to two weeks to the full one month experience. Um, it describes accommodations along the way. There's a map, uh, a lot of detail. This is what our signs are going to look like. Uh, we've got uh, funding for phase two of the Island Walk, which includes uh, 350 signs along the route. Uh, those are going to be posted in conspicuous places where all the turns are, and uh, and we're developing that uh, that signage plan now. The signs will be erected by the PEI government, transportation, and the uh, the signs along the Confederation Trail by uh, the folks that administer the Confederation Trail. And we'll have a, a color brochure. We've got a spreadsheet that describes the accommodations. 
and um, we're going to be ready to uh, to welcome people from uh, Nova Scotia and elsewhere. That's where we are. And if you're interested in the guidebook, uh, Mark will share with you the uh, the link to order your guidebook. This is what it looks like, and uh, it has lots of detail about the route and uh, places to stay, transportation, various other things you may want to uh, to find out about. This presentation was made to the Lunenburg County Hikers in May 2021. Uh, thank you for watching and thank you to Bryson for a great presentation.